Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, April 12th. According to information obtained by Electrek, Tesla is preparing to launch Powerwall 3, the third generation of its home battery pack. We obtained confirmation that Tesla has applied with some electric utilities to have the new product named Powerwall 3 approved and certified equipment for connection with electric utilities. Unfortunately, the new specs or features are not listed in the new certification, but based on prior notes, they will have three main upgrades, which are easier installation, better aesthetics, and higher performance. As to what that means, (laughs) we'll have to see. Tesla has consistently increased the power output of the Powerwall, but has not increased the capacity from the 13.5 kilowatt hours since Powerwall 2 back in 2016. Increased capacity should be on the table, though, since most of the installs include two Powerwalls, so it makes sense to just have one large unit. Considering that Powerwall 3 is already certified by a handful of electric utilities, we expect the product to be launched very soon. Tesla has delivered a fleet of up to 21 semi-trucks to PepsiCo as the automaker slowly ramps up the much-delayed vehicle program. Within weeks of taking delivery of the first truck, Pepsi said that it would be deploying 36. Interestingly, the Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District confirmed that Tesla is selling the electric truck to Pepsi for $250,000. Volume production of the truck is not expected for some time, considering they will eventually come from an expansion of Gigafactory Nevada, which was announced just this last January. Genesis revealed plans for an all-in-one home energy solution. The Genesis home energy system includes rooftop solar panels, battery energy storage, and a 240-volt charge point HomeFlex Level 2 charger, among other features. This is an interesting move considering that no other car company has followed Tesla's lead in terms of home energy. What seems like a strange move is that the solar panels and energy storage systems are available through the Genesis Home Marketplace and by referral from select Genesis dealers. For me, I would have thought that Genesis would have cut out the dealers entirely, but... Volkswagen's all-new upper midsize electric ID7 sedan has finally shown its face without camouflage. The images and specs have been released to the Chinese market, though there will be a European and North American version coming later. With a newly developed electric drive motor, Volkswagen claims that the ID7 will have significantly more power and efficiency than other vehicles based on the MEB platform. Volkswagen even goes so far as calling it an electric limousine. Now, perhaps they mean that for the American version because the Chinese one sports a 201 horsepower electric motor and a 77 kilowatt hour battery. With a top speed of less than 100 miles an hour and a length of around the midsize segment, Volkswagen must have something great in store to warrant the marketing. Because, you know, marketing messages are always factual and never subjective or sensational. Never. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has announced the expected new emission rules today. As previously reported, the rules will result in an EV market share of about 60% by the year 2030 and 67% by 2032. The new EPA rules do not mandate a certain percentage of EV sales, but rather mandate rapidly decreasing average fleet CO2 emissions. Between 26 and 32, fleet emissions will need to drop by an average of 13% per year, until reaching 82 grams CO2 per mile by 2032. Automakers can meet these mandates with whichever technology they choose, but at this stage it's hard to imagine anything other than battery electric. The proposed regulations will go up for public review, and you can find a link to join the discussion on our site, electrek.co. Lawmakers in Vermont are gearing up for a mileage-based EV tax. This is intended to recoup the tax collected for each gallon of gasoline, a ubiquitous tax practice. Lawmakers are roughly aiming for July of 2025 to launch the new tax, because that's when the state aims for 15% of new vehicles to be fully electric or plug-in hybrid. If there's one thing that governments don't want to give up, it's tax income. But there is another motivation, as oil companies have been lobbying for EV taxes in various respects, including EV mileage. On the other end of that coin, we at Electric don't like being taxed, so we propose a weight calculation. Stop and consider that an 80,000-pound 18-wheeler does 9,600 times more damage to roads than a 4,000-pound passenger vehicle. Now, in this scenario, a Tesla Semi or Cybertruck would still tip the tax scales, but not so much for a Nissan Leaf or a Chevy Bolt. 
In today's community comment found on YouTube, a lot of you responded to the question of whether Ford, Hyundai, or Volkswagen will secure a place in the future with an all-in EV gamble. It seems some of you thought that it could work for each of them for various reasons, and also some of you thought that it would not. One thing is for sure, that Legacy Auto is going to have a tough time, and Tesla will be doing just fine. Now for my opinion on who will survive the huge EV bets. As a bit of a disclaimer, I think that all the companies will survive in some form, but as to who will come out at or above their current market share, or market share compared to the pre-electric numbers, that's what I'm going to be guessing on. And I think the highest likelihood of companies mentioned would be Volkswagen. They have the sheer numbers on their side, both for size and scope and the company resources, and also for the announcements of intentions and investments. And I realize these are only announcements. Below that, in terms of survival likelihood, I would put Hyundai. For them, scale is certainly a factor, but I think that their ingenuity and their ability to make desirable products will score huge in a day when people are switching brands. I think Hyundai will come out ahead after the transition. After that, I would put General Motors and then Ford in last place among these, you know, very small list that we have here. For their EV campaigns, the two companies are similar in many ways, except for one, at least one big one at the moment. General Motors has made their own electric vehicle platform that they're using, tuning, and selling, whereas Ford has yet to do that. I think that Ford is out of the gate with an early Volkswagen-based vehicle. However, their designing, engineering, and resource teams are all still very far behind. I still believe that these companies will live on, but not at their pre-electric levels. Of course, this is all in good fun. I mean, no one knows what the future holds, except for the time traveler. I'm sure that there was something that he remembered. Maybe it was electric vehicles. Maybe it was the world being destroyed. I don't know. But let me ask you a different question in closing for today. Which of the startups, the electric vehicle startups, do you think has the greatest chance of living on and even thriving in the new age? I'm thinking companies like Rivian or Canoe, Aptera, anybody. Go ahead and name it in the comment section and let me know because I'm very curious to read your answers. And yes, I'll give you my opinion on which one I think has the greatest likelihood of survival. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.